Hello everybody, it's Clash's Gut here today with a video on how to make a scrolling maze in Scratch. So, let's start by painting a new sprite, and this is going to be our player. So select the square tool, and we don't want an outline. Zoom in, and hold down the shift button while making a square to make a perfect square. And again, don't forget to center it. Okay, and we can call this our player. So, when clicked, we want it just to forever go to zero, zero. And that's it for our player. So, let's go and paint our actual maze. But be careful to not make this too big, okay? So, I'm just going to use the line tool and let's make it a thickness of 10. I'm going to zoom in and make sure again that it's very small. We'll deal with that later. So, because I'm not really going to go into how to make a good maze in this video, it's just about how to make a scrolling maze, I'm not really going to make this a very, very awesome maze. It's just going to be a quick demonstration. So, that's just going to be it for now. And again, let's call this our maze. So, when clicked, we want to set its size to, let's say, 800. So, let's try that. Yep, works. And forever. Now, let's drag out a if block and drag out a key space press and duplicate that until you have two and duplicate it again. Once you have four, you can stop and change that to up arrow, down arrow, right arrow and left arrow so let's make it go to zero zero once it first starts and let's if up arrow press we want to change y by negative 10 and change y by 10 here this is change x by negative 10 and change x by 10 so let's see now we have a very, very easy but functional, functional scrolling maze. But there's a little problem, which you might have noticed, is our player can go through the walls, which isn't really how a maze is supposed to work. So, let's go into the script here and drag out a if touching player. And let's just go into motion. Let's just say change y by 10 for now, okay? So, Drag that in here. And let's duplicate that. And instead of change y by 10, change y by negative 10. And drag it in here. Now let's duplicate that again. And instead of a change y, let's do a change x by 10. And drag it in here. And again, duplicate that. And change x by negative 10. And drag it in here. Cool. So, now let's try. So, again, I cannot... As you can see, I'm still holding the left button, but I'm not going through the wall. It's really cool. And now, I have a very, very basic, but a functional scrolling maze. And that is very, very cool. So, that's pretty good. And of course, this is just a demonstration. So, obviously, you could go and make this a lot more complex and hard. Okay, and let's just go into backdrop. And let's convert to bitmap and make a bit of a background. I'm just going to make this a, I don't know, light grayish color. But now we want a way for the player to kind of win. So after they find a way out of the maze, they have to obviously win. So obviously your maze is going to be a lot more complicated than mine. But after you finish the maze, at the end point where your player com comes out, you want to use the square tool. And for my demonstration, it's just going to be up here and no outline and let's make it a green color you can make it any color you like so just make kind of a green square so that's going to be your target okay so there's a little problem here though as you can see because this is part of the maze the player won't actually touch the green square so we should actually just copy that and delete it and let's just go paint a new sprite and paste it here Okay, just don't move it. And let's go into the maze. And again, let's drag everything from here to here. So they both have the same script. As, and you can now see we have our little green thing up there. And that will be our... Cool. That's very, very good. Okay, cool. 
So, basically, that is a very good way of it working. But, however, as you can see, once I go out of range, this just stays at the edge, which we don't want to happen. So, this is a good way, but let's just not do this for this video, okay? So, again, how do we make an endpoint if we can't use, like, a touch and color block? So, we can, however, use X and Y position. As you can see, our player, once it goes through here, that should mean that it's left the maze. So, as you can see, the Y position is negative 480. So, let's go in here and drag out an if. And let's drag out a smaller than we want if its Y position is smaller than negative 480. Then we want to kind of like broadcast. Oh, yeah, you've won. So, let's drag it a broadcast and let's make it called you win. Okay, cool. So, let's go to the backdrops and well, let's just do some coding. One clicked, just switch costume to backdrop one. Okay, so that's just a blank one. And now let's make a new backdrop. And let's just put some text here. And I don't know, I might make it red text. And let's just say, you win. And of course, make it larger. And again, center it. So, when I receive you win, we want to switch backdrop to backdrop 2. And then we want to stop all. So, let's try this again. Okay, I see our player is here. All good. And now see it's moving and it goes here and aha, you win. So of course in our maze, your coordinates will be different from mine because I'm just doing a small demo. But if you have a bigger maze, just look on here and see what the coordinates are and then change this accordingly. And you might have to do an X also instead of just a Y, you might need an X, but that's for your maze. So that's pretty much it for this video. Thank you for watching. Please leave a like and subscribe if this helped you. See you later.